clouds and trees. Plant a flower garden up on top of the moon. Go swing through the jungle all afternoon. Wherever our story takes us, I can't wait to see. Yes, friends, come and read with me. It's online story time. Hello, everybody, and welcome to online story time at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy, a teacher Missy, and we are so excited that you're here with us today. Hey, before we start talking about whatever we're going to start talking about, how about if we sing? Oh, let's have a little, a little song. All right, Storytime friends, would you sing with us? Get your clapping stuff ready. Here we go. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. <sighs> that was so nice. I heard a lot of clapping. Yeah, and good singing out there. I bet you people want to hear some stories. I think so. Hey, what do you want to talk about today? Well, <laughs> something I kind of really like okay. and I just think would be so fun to have. But I'm probably not going to get to have one. We take a really good look at my picture here. What do you think that looks like? I think it's a dragon. It is a dragon. And what did be fun to have a dragon? But are dragons real? No, that's why I can't have one. Oh, okay. All right. We could have pictures about dragons. Though. And we could have stuffed animals that are dragons. And we, we could, could pretend we had a dragon. We could pretend to be a dragon. Ooh, with our wings flying. And fire coming out of our wings. <laughs> oh my gosh, what fun. They're just such interesting creatures to me. And there are so many great stories about uh, dragons. Oh, yes there are. I'm so excited. Did you bring a couple for us to read today? Um, I might have. Miss Tracy, look what I've got. Oh my goodness. I see a dragon, I see a child, and I see underwear. Oh, now what could those things have in common? A dragon, a child, and underwear? Hmm. Well, the name of our book this morning is called How to Dress a Dragon. Do you think a dragon wears underwear? If they wear clothes, there must be something under there. There might be. This book was written by Thelma Godin, and the pictures were done by Eric Barclay. And the book comes to us from Scholastic Publishers. We're going to find out about these underwear. This is kind of silly looking to me. I think this could be kind of a fun story. If you have to dress a dragon, you must be prepared to catch him as he flies by. What are they trying to catch him with? A net. Look at that. I don't think that's going to work. You may have to tickle tackle him to the floor and give him belly kisses. Once your dragon is still, it's time to put on his underwear. He's showing him. I think that's a boy. I think he's showing him the underwear. I wonder what the dragon is thinking. The good thing is, dragons love underwear. Especially froggy superhero ones. Silly dragon. Where did he put the underwear? On his head. <laughs> oh, oh, the dragon is just laughing. You might have to sit saddle your dragon to put on his socks. Dragons have very ticklish feet. Silly dragon. Look at, he's got socks all over him. That is so silly. Dragons do not like shirts with buttons. Dragons do not like shirts that pull over their heads. Dragons do not like shirts. Look at him. He looks all, oh, mad, doesn't he? He doesn't want to wear a shirt. 
but he likes his froggy underwear. But they do like capes. Look at, he's got a beautiful red cape on. Dragons prefer shorts instead of pants. Shorts are much easier to put on with big dragon feet. He does have big feet. Look at his feet. Are your feet that big? No. I bet they're not. Please, dragon, don't scrunch up your toes. Oh, shoes. Shoes can be tricky. But if, you're, if you let your dragon wear his froggy boots, he'll be very, very happy. Look at his clap. Clap, 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 clap. He likes his froggy boots. I, he must like frogs, Miss Tracy, because he Maybe. likes his froggy underwear, too. Sure. When your dragon is all dressed, he's going to want to go outside and play. There he is in his froggy boots. What color is his cape? You're right, it's red. But beware. If he wants to play his favorite game of dragon and knight, your dragon will insist on being the <laughs> silly knight. <laughs> Look at, he's all dressed up like a knight. And there they are sitting on the roof. What time of day do you suppose that is? Uh, I see a moon. Stars, I think they're looking at nighttime. Silly dragon. Well, that's how you dress your dragon. Hey, story time, friends. Hey, teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. You want to play flannels? Oh, you know what? I love your flannels. All right. Hey, story time, friends. If you notice, we have porcupine, bear, snakes, dragons. Yes, they're dragons. We have dragons on the board. We do. I wonder how many we have. Do you want to count them with me? Mm. One, two, three, three four, four, and five. We have five dragons. Now, these dragons, there's a backstory to them. They're babies. <gasps> baby dragons. They are five baby dragons, and they are learning how to scare people. Oh. <laughs> because dragons have to learn, I guess, how to be scary and blow fire. <laughs> I didn't see any fire come out. <laughs> no, no fire. I guess I'm not a dragon. I guess not. All right, but I hear that it's difficult to learn how to blow fire. So we're going to we're going to just tag along as these five little babies are learning how to scare. All right? Here we go. Five baby dragons learning how to scare. They flap their wings and then blow what did they blow? Did they blow fire? Mm, no. They blew bubbles in the air. Oh, no. We've all blown bubbles. But that's not what baby dragons are supposed to blow. Okay, they're going to try again. Here we go. No, no, Mama says. Bubbles don't scare. Baby dragons are supposed to blow fire in the air. Here we go. Five baby dragons learning how to scare. They flap their wings. Can you flap? Flap, flap. Then blow kisses in the air. <laughs> Is that what they were supposed to blow in the air? Look at that. They all blew kisses. That doesn't seem scary. That's not very scary. I wonder what else they could blow. Okay, they're gonna try again. No, no, Mama says. Kisses don't scare. Baby dragons are supposed to blow fire in the air. Five baby dragons learning how to scare. They flap their wings. Flap, flap. 
and blow balloons in the air. Oh, no. oh my goodness, baby dragons, they're trying so hard. So hard. No, no, Mama says. Balloons don't scare. Baby dragons are supposed to blow fire in the air. Should we try again? One more. Five baby dragons learning how to scare. They flap their wings and blow fire in the air. <sighs> Can you blow fire with me? <sighs> yes, yes, Mama says. And she gives them each a kiss. Baby dragons blow fire just like this. Roar! Did you roar? That was fun. Hey, thanks for playing with us. Miss Tracy, look, I have another book. I see another dragon. Oh, I you see. You know what? That dragon looks like our picture of a dragon on our well, board. It kind of does. Look at they're the same color. That's crazy. That is crazy. How cool is that? Well, this book is called Zog and the Flying Doctors. Hmm. This book was written by Julia Donaldson and the pictures were done by Alex Scheffler. And Julia Donaldson has written other books for kids. Some of you might know the story about the Gruffalo. That was written by her. And the Gruffalo's Child, that was written by her. Well, this is called Zog and the Flying Doctors and I can't imagine how they're flying. I, I, I guess maybe on the dragon? Hmm. We'll have to find out. We will have to find out. This looks very interesting. Okay, Zog and the Flying Doctors. This comes to us from Scholastic. That's our publisher. All right, are you ready? Meet the Flying Doctors, a dragon, knight, and girl. Their names are Gadabout the Great and Zog and Princess Pearl. Pearl gives people medicine and pills and vaccinations. And Gadabout is expert at performing operations. Zog is good at flying, though not quite so good at landing. But Gadabout and Princess Pearl are always understanding. Flying high one morning, they heard a mermaid wail. I'm sunburned and it hurts, she cried, and she swished her scaly tail. Bang, crash, thump, they landed. The mermaid's skin was red. Pearl rubbed in some special cream and wear this hat, she said. Thank you, said the mermaid, and she waved a fond goodbye as the team of flying doctors sped away into the sky. And there they go. Look at, she's got a hat now so she doesn't get sunburned more. And cream. As the sun rose higher, they saw a unicorn. He pawed the ground and whinnied. Oh, I've grown an extra horn. Bang, crash, thump, they landed. I'll help you, said the knight, and he cut the horn off gently to the unicorn's delight. Thank you, said the unicorn, for taking so much care. And the team of flying doctors sped away into the air. Halfway through the afternoon, they heard a lion sneeze. I've caught the flu, the lion roared. Can someone help me, please? Bang, crash, thump. They landed, and Pearl said, take this pill and do keep warm. That's terribly important when you're ill. But the lion's cave was chilly, so Zog said, fetch some wood. And he breathed out lots of flames until the fire burned bright and good. Thank you, said the lion. I'm feeling nice and warm. Then the team of flying doctors sped away into the storm. As evening fell, they saw a great big place below. My uncle's house, said Princess Pearl. Let's go and say hello. 
Look at this thing. What is this house? What kind of house is that? Look at that. Isn't that a castle? That looks like a castle to me. Bang, crash, thump. They landed. Pearl's uncle was the king. He didn't say hello. Instead, he said, Oh, you naughty thing. Where have you been, he thundered. You look an awful mess. What's happened to your crown and where's your frilly dress? But, uncle, can't you see that I'm a doctor now, said Pearl. The king replied, princesses can't be doctors, silly girl. Hmm. Ooh. I think he's wrong. I think he's wrong. He told his men to seize her and lock her up inside. Princess Pearl was furious. She stomped and stormed and cried. Weeks went by and Princess Pearl spent many weary hours sewing pretty cushions and arranging pretty flowers. The others tried to rescue her with all their might and main, but they simply couldn't manage. All their efforts were in vain. They're trying to rescue her and get her out of there, aren't they? Each night they flew to visit her and perched upon the sill. And one dark night she told them that the king had fallen ill. The king grew worse, his head was sore, his arms and legs were weak. His skin turned orange and he found it hard to speak. He called a lot of doctors, a new one every day, and he croaked, what is this illness? But they simply couldn't say. They didn't know the answer, but Pearl was pretty sure it looked like orange fever. And she read about the cure. Grated horn of unicorn, a mighty lion's sneeze, some mermaid scales, a little slime, and a half a pound of cheese. She told the others what to get and do be very quick. My uncle could be dying. He looks extremely sick. Away flew Zog and Gadabout. They reached the lion's den. Bang, crash, thump, they landed. He sneezed for them. And then they flew to the forest where the grateful unicorn was very pleased to give them his unwanted sawed-off horn. Back to the mermaid's rock they flew, she gladly gave them scales, and her sea snail friends allowed them to catch their slimy trails. Zog said, oh, I'm exhausted. But he flew and he flew until... Bang, crash, thump! He landed on the bedroom windowsill. Princess Pearl said thank you for the scales, the slime, the sneeze, and the horn which she grated up with a half a pound of cheese. She tiptoed to her uncle's room. The king lay in his bed. She held a spoonful to her mouth, his mouth and said, now open wide, she said. After just one spoonful, her uncle felt much stronger. And after two spoonfuls, he wasn't orange any longer. After spoonful three, the king was dancing with delight. Princesses can be doctors. You were absolutely right. Oh, I'm so sorry that I locked you up. Of course, you must go free. But do come back to visit me and bring your friends to tea. Hooray, cried Pearl, and she ran to join the other two. Then off they sped into the sunset, the flying doctor crew. And there they go. Off they sped. And they're gone. So did the king realize that a princess can't be a doctor? Mm -hmm. He just needed to get some information, and he got it. <laughs> and she's off. Hey, story time friends. Hey, teacher Missy. Yes. How about some scarf songs? Well, you know I love the scarves. All right, so out of your, oh, here's, here's oh, a green. Oh, my favorite one. Green one for teacher Missy. Out of your story time kit, I'd like you to find your scarf. And if you don't have a scarf to wave, you could wave, well, teacher Missy waves her sock, and that works. You could wave your sock. 
love to wave myself. You could wave a paper towel. You could wave a hand towel. You could wave a dish towel. You could wave anything with the word towel in it. You could. Because you could just wave it, okay? And if you don't have your story time kit yet, they're waiting here for you at the library. So come and get them. Excuse me? Oh, oh heavens, yes. Story time friends. Monkey wants to be our story time friend today. Morning, teacher Missy. Oh, good morning, Monkey. Are you going to come and do scarves with us? I'm right excited to see you today. Well, I'm so glad to see you. I'm going to watch you wave your scarf around. There we go. How's this? Okay, that's that's really good. Peekaboo. <laughs> Peekaboo. Yeah. Okay, all right, here we go. Sorry, got a little distracted because Monkey likes to play. Okay, our first song that we're going to sing with our scarves is called Fly Fly Dragon. And our scarves, our dragons, are our scarves. And we're gonna fly way up in the sky, and we're gonna hop way up high, and we're gonna turn around. All right, here we go. This is called Fly Fly Dragon. <gasps> fly Fly Dragon, fly up high. Fly Fly Dragon, fly up high. Fly Fly Dragon, fly up high. Fly way up in the sky. Nice. Now ready? We're going to hop our dragon. Here we go. Hop, hop, dragon up and down. Hop, hop, dragon up and down. Hop, hop, dragon up and down. Hop way up high. Whoa, that was some great hopping. Holy the heavens to Betsy. Okay, now let's have our dragon turn around. Ready? Turn, turn, dragon, turn around. Turn, turn, dragon, turn around. Turn, turn, dragon, turn around. Sit, dragon, sit down. Did you sit down? Let's let, let's try that last verse again. Okay, we're gonna turn our dragon, and then we're gonna sit our dragon down. Here we go. Turn, turn, dragon, turn around. Turn, turn, dragon, turn around. Turn, turn, dragon, turn around. Sit, dragon, sit down. <laughs> nice job. All right. Okay, we have one more dragon scarf song, and this is called We Are Dragons. Okay, here we go. We are dragons. We have wings. We can fly and do dragon things. We can breathe fire. Here we go. Oh, did you see my fire come out? That looks like fire. Swish our long tails. Travel for miles without leaving trails. Roaring, soaring dragons fly. And now it's time to say goodbye. Should we sing that song again? That's such a fun one. That is a fun one. Did you get your scarf roaring like flames? <sighs> Here we go. We are dragons. We have wings. We can fly and do dragon things. We can breathe fire. <sighs> Swish our long tails, travel for miles without leaving trails. Roaring, soaring dragons fly, and now it's time to say goodbye. Thanks for playing. Oh, story time, friends. Teacher Missy. What a great day learning about dragons. This was so awesome. Did you know that a dragon likes underwear? Who knew? And we learned that not only was Zog a wonderful flying dragon, but we learned that indeed princesses can be doctors. Princesses can be doctors. That's an important lesson. Yes, it is. Another important lesson that teacher Missy pointed out is that with our baby dragons, if at first you don't succeed, meaning if you don't get it right the first time, that's okay, because what do you have to do? Try and try again. That's right, and our baby dragons did that. They tried to blow a balloon, and they tried to blow a bubble, and they tried to blow kisses. Finally, they blew fire. 
I love Dragon Books, and I love what you shared with us today. This was a great day. But now I think it's time to say goodbye. You guys want to clap with us? Here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Story time is done today. Now it's time to go and play. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. Catch a dragon. <laughs>